driven motorhomes? How many in here have not driven their motorhome? Anybody? There's a few here, okay. We're going to help you. All right, we're going to make it comfortable for you to go ahead and start uh, driving the motorhome. I'm going to tell you about three little dots that you're going to use on your motorhome that's going to help you, and then I'm going to give you some mental things on how to drive the motorhome. First of all, motorhomes, whether it's a Super C, whether it's a Midas, whether it's a Wayfair, uh, those of us that we don't really have anything as a reference point, we need a reference point for our motorhomes. When I first started driving, as I said, I was 77 years old, back in the 50s and 60s, we had hood ornaments, or we had fenders, and we could use the point of that hood ornament to line it up with a, a line on the road, and we knew we were in the middle of the lane. Well, now on the motorhomes, we don't have that. So what we're going to do is that, I know this isn't a real clear picture, this is a picture of my wife in the back of her head, isn't she pretty? <laughs> sitting in the driver's seat. I think that's an electric red or a phaeton that we had that year. And so what we're doing is that we put a dot on the windshield and using that dot as a reference, it really helps you in knowing where you are in the lane. Now let me tell you how we do this. First of all, you find a two lane road. If there's a road that you can sit for a minute or two without disturbing traffic, you want to stop the motorhome and make sure it's in the middle of the right hand lane. Right in the middle. So if you have a foot to the edge of the pavement on the right, a foot to the yellow line in the left, that's in the middle of the right. At that time, you have your, like me, I was the one that put the dot on the windshield, and the dot needs to go somewhere around 18 inches or higher off the dash so that you're not looking down at the road, you're looking out at the road. Okay, you don't want the dot so low that you're just looking down at the road. You want to have it at least 18 inches off the dash. Then, you put a dot on the windshield, inside of the windshield, with the little sticking thing on the one side, and it should be from her line of sight, from her eyes, through the windshield, looking at that dot, and it should be on the yellow line. So now, as she's driving, or I'm driving, all I have to do is look at that dot, and if it's on that yellow line, I'm in the middle of the lane. Everybody's always taking their eyes off the road looking at their mirrors, right? Am I in the middle of the lane? Am I too close to the edge? Am I too close to the yellow line? This takes all that away. You don't have to take your eyes off the road just put that dot there, drive down the highway, and as long as it's on the center line, you're in the middle of the lane. Where that really helps is in the construction areas. When you have those big concrete things on it, or those big yellow cones, or big orange barrels, all you have to do is go with that dot, and you'll stay in the middle of the lane and not worry about it. What you're trying to do is you're trying to prevent yourself, if I'm looking out the windshield, I want to use that as my peripheral vision. I don't want to have to look down at the dot and take my eyes off the road. So I just want to be able to look at the road and know that that's there on the line in my peripheral vision. Now, people think, all right, my husband, I'm five foot two, my husband's six foot ten, and he's going to move the seat back. He's also going to move it down. What's going to happen? No, it doesn't stay right there. It doesn't matter. There's not enough movement in the seat, up or down, or forward and back, that's going to change that uh, more than maybe an inch, half inch. So you never have to replace that dot. It stays there for both of the drivers. Intersections. All of our motorhomes now have at least a 50 degree wheel cut on the front. Some of them have 55, some of them have 60. You don't have to really worry about that. The only thing you really need to worry about is that when you come to a corner and I want to make a turn, if I were to turn like this to the left, more than likely I'm going to hit that car. <laughs> I didn't even know that was going to happen. <laughs> more than likely I'm going to hit that car because I haven't waited long enough to make 
at my turn. So what you need to remember is, if I'm making a left-hand turn, I'm sitting in the driver's seat, I want to I want to go perfectly straight. Now this is on two-lane road now. I want to go perfectly straight to my shoulder passes the object I do not want to hit. Or I want to make sure that my shoulder is at least to the yellow line before I make that left-hand turn. So I'm going to go straight until I'm past the object I don't want to hit or the yellow line. Then I'm going to turn. And when I do make the turn, even with the tow vehicle, you will not hit the vehicle at the corner. You have plenty of room. So wait till your shoulder gets past what you do not want to hit or the yellow line. Or move his foot off 
the accelerator is on the accelerator. That's not correct, but I'm going to tell you the correct thing. I've had people that said that they do the three P's. You know what the three P's are? Panic. <laughs> That's not the thing to do. We're going to start with the diesel pushers. All diesel pushers have a air brake. And they're a parking brake, a little yellow thing there, right? If you're in a diesel pusher, what you're going to do is you're going to get up, you're going to take control of the steering wheel. If you're in the right-hand lane, you want to try to get off the right-hand side of the road. If you're in the left-hand lane, try to get off the left. If you're in the middle of six lanes of traffic, just go straight. But pull the yellow button. That's your emergency brake on all of these pushers. It will not throw you through the windshield. All air brake systems must have a second braking system that involves zero air. It's mandatory by the federal government. So what's going to happen on that is that when you pull that, it's going to set a spring brake into action to apply the brakes on the rear drive axle only. So I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how air brakes work and how the spring brake works. Air brakes, we have a canister front on each wheel and in the back on each wheel. Anytime that you step on the air brakes, it's taking air out of that canister, applying it to the brake and the calipers in applying the brake for stopping. 60% of your braking power with air is on the front axle. 40% of your braking power with air is on the rear drive axle. So that's 100%. If you look at calipers on a car nowadays, you're going to see they're 20% larger in the front than they are in the rear. It's, it applies to cars the same way. 60% of your stopping power is in the front brakes, 40% on the rear. And if you don't believe that, just connect your front brake sometimes, see how long it takes you to stop. It's really amazing the difference. So now, person's passed out of the steering wheel, you grab the wheel, pull the yellow button, all the air exhaust out of the whole air system. Up in the cab, you're only hearing Psh. Underneath, it's going Psh. If you've ever been in a truck stop and heard a truck setting that brake, you hear all the air underneath. All the air is gone. So now in the two rear canisters, well, in the drive axle, there's a spring that's being held back by a diaphragm inside this can canister with a big spring brake. So we pump up the air system. Here's the canister, this big round. It's using that diaphragm, squeezing that spring, squeezing the spring. The, the spring has totally collapsed. Now we're operating the whole air system off this air in this canister. But once the air is gone, this diaphragm comes down, the spring applies, and now the diaphragm says apply the brake with the spring. By doing that, it's only applying 25% of your total braking power. So it's not going to throw you through the windshield. It's going to bring the motor home to a, a quick stop. But you're going to be stopped, not from going through the windshield. Now, once you get stopped, you can throw them out the door if you want. <laughs> you can, if you love them, you might just help them onto the floor. But then you get into the driver's seat and you push the button back in, the air builds up again, you drive off. You're not at a permanent stop. It's just like you are in a campground. Before you drive off, you push that yellow button in, wait till the air builds up, and then you go. You got your air brakes back. So that's a real good safety feature for that. How many people have Allegro open roads here? Okay, if you have an Allegro open road, there's a difficult part. I know. Can we trade? <laughs> well, here's the reason why I do diesel pusher. So, <laughs> if that happens to your spouse and they pass out of the wheel, you got to get a hold of the drive or the steering wheel to take control of the motor. And that's the number one thing. Number two, you have to get to that brake pedal. There's no other way on a Class A open road. So whether it's your hand, whether it's your foot, whether you can slide him or her over a little bit and get your foot down there in the brake, that's the only way you can do it on a Class A. Anybody here have a Wayfair? If you 
you'd have a wayfarer or a Cahaba or one of the, the uh, Mercedes chassis. Take the steering wheel, you have a brake lever right next to the driver's seat. You don't even need to get out of your seat. You grab the steering wheel, pull up on that brake lever until you come to a stop. Okay? And then once you're stopped, release the brake, throw them out the door, get in the driver's seat. Do you want them to fall back gently or where do they go? In, in We're not going to pull anything back gently when somebody's back at the Yeah, but this is how you need pull it up as fast as you can. And how much braking is going to still bring you to a court? Well, practice, you'll see. You'll see. It, it, with the, the type that you pull up, the higher you bring it, the more brake you have. If you just bring it up a little bit, it's a light. So there's no percentage in that. But you're going to be in panic mode. You're going to you're going to grab it. The one thing you never want to do that I've heard customers tell me is turn the key off. <laughs> never, never, because you're losing your power steering, you're losing everything. Always leave the key on. Don't ever touch the key. This is something else that is very good for safety. Fire extinguishers. We give you one. We had many recalls on fire extinguishers the last two years. I think you said, do you remember the number? Six million? It was a lot. It was a lot, wasn't it? And anyway, number of fire extinguishers that we have to put in the motorhome when we're building it is one. You need more than one fire extinguisher. The man that was in here before, I loved his explanation of five. Five fire extinguishers sounds like a lot, but it isn't. And he was explaining you have one in the front that we give you. Okay, you may or may not know where that is, but you need to know. You have one in the kitchen area, you have one in your bathroom area, you have one in your bedroom area. Now, I'm talking about the rear back. So, you know, depending, you want to be four sections in that motor room that you could quickly grab a fire extinguisher. That's one of the things you really need to concentrate. And then another one in the basement. We do have other homes that we supply a um, fire extinguisher in the basement. You would hook it onto a door, and one of the places that I would put it, if I had LP gas, I'm gonna put it near the LP gas tank. Okay. If I had anything that was electrical, maybe I had a grill or something out there, I'm gonna put it near that grill. But any place that you might suspect a fire that could start, that's where I would put it. Okay. The other thing he mentioned that I didn't know about, that I think is really good, he said, how many times did you ever remove the fire extinguisher and tried it and looked at the expiration date? And how many times have you ever taken it out and shook it upside down? upright and upside down. He recommended doing that once every three months. I did not know that, but that's a really good safety thing. These are things that you need to know about your motorhome. And the reason I say that is that all of our motorhomes are getting taller. They're wider. Some are longer. Tail swing. Tail swing is something that people don't really think about, but if I'm stopped at a gas pump and I have to make a turn out of the gas pump, and if I all of a sudden from dead stop turn the wheel all the way to the left and the gas pumps are on the right, how far is this back end of the motorhome from the wheels back? How far is that going to swing out if I'm turning hard left? Am I going to hit the gas pumps? Does anybody know what the equation is for that? What you do is you measure from the middle of your rear drive axle to the back bumper. Whatever that distance is, you divide it by four, and that will tell you what your tail swing is from a dead stop turning as far as you can right or left. So let's say I got 12 feet, for an example, from here to the bumper, and I'm at a dead stop, and I've got pumps over here. I'm gonna turn left as hard as I can, 
that back end, as soon as I start moving, is going to swing out three feet. Now, if the pumps are four feet, I got nothing to worry about. If they're two and a half feet, you're in trouble. You're going to hit the pumps. But that's only at a dead stop. Remember, if you're going forward and making a gradual turn, then the tail swing is far less. But if you're at a dead stop and you're going to make a tight turn, you better think about that tail swing. And I will tell you, there's one place that I almost did the three P's. <laughs> and that was in New Jersey on the parkway. Garden State Parkway. The Garden State Parkway. The Garden State Parkway has bridges that were built years ago. Yep. And they are crowned yeah. on yeah. the outside lane. Some of those clearances are like 12 foot 2. In the middle, it could be 14, 10. But if you're ever on that parkway and you don't know that, and your motorhome is 13, 2, and you come up to 12, 2, you're going to probably do part of the three Ps. Let me tell you about when it comes to that. Oh, here's one. If you don't know your height, watch this. seeing an inch of the mirror and this would be the side of your coach so you want to see an inch of the mirror is going to be the side of your coach so that we know that from there out I'm going to see everything but I can actually see down the side of the coach that's where you want to set up that mirror and this is what you'll see when that's done correctly then this is what you'll see so it's only going to let you see this far down on the back of your coach, but then as you go farther out, it's going to see the rest. But then we have a convex mirror. In the convex mirror, you want to see anywhere from a quarter to a third of that mirror needs to be your coach. Then the convex mirror is the green line, so it shows out farther to the right, and then it also shows where it covers this and goes down to here. So now we're looking at the bottom part of the coach. That's the way that you want to set your mirrors as you're driving. <clears throat> where are your back tires? You need to know where those are because there's campgrounds that I swear they purposely put big rocks on the corners just to help support the body shots that they are being <laughs> I mean, have you been in some of those? I mean, the corner, you make a curve, and you've got to know where that thing is. And so now, you know, that idea of getting past what you don't want to hit, that's out the window because you're still making a curve. They don't give you enough room to go straight. So we need to know where our back tires are. So in doing so, we're going to take either a water bottle or you might even use your fire extinguisher, that way you'll know where it is when you put that out. <laughs> but we're going to set it where the right tire is, and we're going to place the bottles on the ground six inches from the center of the tire. So we're going to put it out six inches away from the motorhome, but we want it perfectly in line with the center of these tires. So next, we're going to have it sitting just like that. And that's what we see in the bottom convex mirror. And now in the mirror, we're going to see this in the convex mirror. So next, we want to put a dot right at the bottom of those bottles on the mirror, small little dot. So now we've talked about a dot on the windshield for having a, uh, a reference point. And now we're going to put a dot on each one of these convex mirrors. So anytime that I'm making a turn then, as long as I know 
there's a tree there, and the tree makes it past this mirror, I know I can turn because my tires and that are past that, and I'm not going to hit that big rock or whatever it is that we want to clear. But that's your other reference point. Next is something that rear view camera. We need to know in our cameras where the back of the motorhome is. Even if you cannot see the back of the motorhome on your camera, don't worry about that. As long as you can see three feet back. Because the next thing you need to do is put another one of those bottles three feet back from the rear of the motorhome. And on your camera, you're going to put a line where that bottle is. Why do we want to do that? Because there's many times that we are backing up and we don't know where the actual back of that motorhome is. How far are we from that tree? How far are we from that overhang? How far are we from uh, hitting a big rock? And the reason you put it three feet is that, think of all the motorhomes we still have with the ladders on the back. That extends out a foot and a half. So you want to make sure that you're stopping three feet away so that you're not damaging the motorhome. Okay, and then if you are towing a vehicle, that'll show on your line here too. But here's a, a really cool part about towing on your vehicle. See, see these little rabbit ears? How many of you have the motorhome that has tire pressure monitor system that is registering your tow vehicle? Okay? The rest of you do not, right? So, we still have motorhomes out there that does not tell what is happening on your tow vehicle. Part of the tire pressure monitor systems for the tow vehicle, if you ever had a flat tire, 95% of the time you did not know it because the motorhomes are so powerful when you have them on cruise and whatever, and that tow vehicle's got a flat tire and you're just dragging it along, no problem at all. The big diesels or Ford engines or Chevy or whatever it was, you didn't know it until somebody pulled up next to your thing and went, Pull over, pull over, you have a flat, you got a flat. And, and I mean, then you start to do three P's again, you know, you don't know what they're talking about. So, you don't know. But anyway, here's what we did prior to that, and this is how you do it. On your tow vehicle, you just take, it could be a hair clip with a ribbon on it or whatever, or it could be a handkerchief. You tie something onto that steering wheel, and that way, when you're looking through your rear camera, if there's a flat tire front or back, that little handkerchief thing is going to start going. It's going to move. That's your telltale sign that you something wrong with the tow vehicle. So we use that all the time before tire pressure monitor systems. Just to give you an idea, on what those mirrors are seeing, and, and as cars come up, an approaching car, <clears throat> when you see it in the large mirror, it's about a mile away, okay? And you'll see it at the top of the mirror. As that car gets closer, if it's getting near a quarter mile away, you'll see it at the bottom of the big mirror, and it'll also be in the convex mirror. <clears throat> then if it's less than a quarter mile away, you will see it in the convex mirror only. We also have motorhomes nowadays with the blind spot monitors, and we're doing that on the Allegro bus, and I believe we're doing it on the Phaeton now, and that does, of course, help on that. But this is, you know, before we had all this high technology stuff, and this is the way that I still use it. I use it the same way every day. And then you can see if it is within that quarter mile, you know, you can always see it in the convex mirror. It's going to be the same thing on the right hand side. You'll see the same thing in the mirror as we go along. And then it'll be approaching here. Now, there has been a blind spot in our motorhomes for years, and that's why Bob put in that little doggy window. Okay? So, if you ever wanted any additional vision on that side. You could use a 
the guy that invented the White House. The First, the fentanyl. Thank you. The fentanyl lens, and you can buy those. They're a, a rectangular or square shape from RV uh, parts stores, and you could just stick it on your window of your entrance door if it's a front entrance, or you could put it on your passenger window if it's not a front entrance, and you could see right down to the side of the motorhome. There might be a picture in this, I don't know, let me see. Yeah, there it is, a Fresno lens. Um, it would be, see if I had a front door, I might put it there, I might just put it on the window here. But it, it's one that the person that invited, invented the White House, he invented that, and it gives you direct vision all the way down. Now, one other thing that I want to cover that you said, she was talking about a flat tire. If you ever have a flat tire, on a motorhome, do not hit the brake. Always step on the accelerator. Now, the reason for that is, if you ever do any kind of driving, even in a car, and you've ever done any kind of racing, before you ever get to a curb, you slam on the brakes, but never hit the brakes while you're on the curb, because it could cause the car to dip, it could cause it to roll, it could cause it to lose control. Same thing on a motorhome. If you have a flat tire, it doesn't matter if it's front or rear. You do not want to step on the brake because it could give you an adverse condition and maybe uh, put the motorhome off the road or the roll or whatever. So always just put your foot on the accelerator, gently let off, let it come down. That flat tire is going to bring you to a stop. You don't have to hit the brakes. But always hit the, the accelerator and bring it down. Another thing, just from personal use, I want to tell you something that I see people doing all the time and they complain and complain about it. How many have a slide out on the passenger side front of their motorhome? Passenger side front, okay. How many times have you ever had that slide out extended and then your awning extended and you're always saying, man, that's taking room out of my patio having that slide out. Well, let me tell you, during the daytime, all you got to do is go in, put that slide out in, it takes seven seconds, and you have the full use of your patio, you're not taking anything away from the inside of the coach that you can't utilize, and you never have to hit your head as many times on the bottom of the slide out getting things out of the basement storage area. Let me tell you, I hit my head 116 times before I figured that out. <laughs> And now I put the slide out in all the time. It gives you the full patio space. You're not losing anything. Do that and you'll be much, much happier. 